Hello, everybody. We are the Palladian Papists. I'm James. I'm Nathan. And I am Riley. Today's topic, why stories are important. I think we should introduce, like, what the premise of this thing is. Yeah, what is this podcast we're doing? Why, why are we here? Why am I talking into a microphone? What why is am I lo- peeking the... the what um, is love? <laughs> Baby, Baby, don't, don't hurt, hurt me. me. <laughs> Copyright strike, watch out. Yeah, we, we gotta be careful. We, we gotta, gotta be careful. Fair use. Fair use. Fair mm-hmm. fair. It was less than 10, 10 seconds. I mm-hmm. think we're good. Mm-hmm. Um, well... We wanted to have this podcast, I guess, more or less, because we already talk about popular culture, movies, music, TV, um, movie, or I said movies said already, movies. video games, books, and we have like lengthy, lengthy, in-depth alcohol-assisted conversations, <laughs> like all good Catholics, and uh, we figured why not record some of this and share our insights, and because podcasting would be kind of fun, we thought. So we'll see what if any if this goes anywhere um so yeah uh hmm yeah we just wanted to briefly introduce the preface the podcast with the the concept of stories and why they're important and why we should be discerning about the media we consume and make sure that we are being fair critics of it and not just taking it at face value and allowing the the culture that the media is trying to push to us overtake us. We have to be discerning and critical about it. And you can't just say it's not in the Bible, therefore bad, and slam the hammer down. There, there's nuance to it. There's things we can talk about. There's depth. Also, there's not popular actor XYZ, so it's automatically good because they're in it sort of a thing. Or, or if you hate a movie, if you have logical facts and logic to destroy people with, why a movie is bad. Okay, fine. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're going to destroy this movie tonight, folks. Right? <laughs> um, so, oh man, I had that train of thought. Um, we got derailed. We got derailed a little bit, like a crazy train. Um, I mean, we, we, we do that a lot anyway, so I mean, that'll... Derail James. <laughs> the magic of editing. Is yes, it's it's gonna, editing. editing is going to be quite lovely. Um, okay, James, so, yeah. yeah. So the whole the whole point of this podcast, we basically want to illuminate for everybody how, as Catholics, we are called to be in the world, but not of it. Um, so, it, and of course, you know, within the whole virtue ethics thing of Catholicism, there is this concept of balance between two extremes, um, being and so in this case, being in the world and being of it. So we want to find, strike that balance by taking in what the culture is giving us to a certain extent where, you know, appropriate and applicable, because obviously there are some things you should not watch. Right, but at the same time, there's other things that are really cool, mm-hmm. but also have some issues. Yeah, and sometimes there are films that are mostly good. Some, there's that one scene. There's that always that one scene. In, and it's like, what the heck is that? But yeah, basically the search for nuance. Um, and so basically, with any sort of storytelling medium, whether you have... Um, movies, video games, songs to some extent. There's some. Yeah. There's some narrative music, Quite like bit. Johnny Cash or like ballads in general, things like that. Um, Should I hear the bars? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Quite the epic story. The normal that. Tuesday night. Um, for Shia LaBeouf. Uh, but yeah, no. So, general uh, stories are pretty important to us as human beings. There's the whole um. I mean, if we really wanted to get in depth, we could talk about, um, I think it's Kenneth Burke. There's this theorist who had this thing called the narrative paradigm, which I hope I'm not mixing this up with somebody else, although I probably am, because that's what I paid attention to in college was the content and not proper attribution. Um, hence the beginning of this podcast. And uh, <laughs> uh, But basically, we... It looks at all human communication through this lens, like this paradigm of that we tell stories. So if we ask somebody how their day went, we'd be like, well, I got up this morning, I ate breakfast. I mean, this is how I'd say it. Uh, some people don't go into as much detail, but got up this morning, I ate breakfast, and I went to work, and X, Y, Z happened at work. Well, that sort of followed like a linear storyline almost. Or like if you talk about even something a little less, a little more abstract, there's there's usually like this progression or the story to how you're explaining something. 
Um, heck, there's even a story, a logic chain thing that I'm following right now as I'm talking about this. So Really? Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't tell. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but then there's also um, stories, I guess, if you just take a look at human history, go, people have told stories basically ever since we can tell, like whether it's cave paintings or different songs and stuff they had during medieval times. Um, telling stories of like great characters who like say the round uh, knights of the round table etc um or like the s- stuff and well obviously there's bible stories um for those in the i mean jesus told stories yeah to jesus yeah ideas yeah jesus primary sneak. means of teaching people was basically through storytelling yeah pretty much you have like the greek fables you have you know other like contemporary texts in the to like when the bible the old testament was written and stuff telling stories about like their gods and so forth the yeah. iliad the, the works greek mo- uh, morality plays um and, and the list goes on so obviously stories have been pretty central to the way we humans communicate and think about things and, and the way culture is formed around stories you know around like a myth i guess is uh oh dang uh, as was, was like Robert Bishop Robert Barron would say, we're just doing all like all the name drops for all, like the keyword optimization in this in this first episode. <laughs> the upload of the the Vatican archives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so when it comes so uh, fast forward to now, um, oftentimes we'll watch a movie. I feel like with with a lot of films and video games and things these days, there's plenty of plot but not enough story. Um, So take, for example, you have, well, the most recent Star Wars trilogy, if we want to keep on the top. Sure, let's (laughs) let's, let's, let's take the hot topic and... Let's take the hot topic and ride that (laughs) SEO all the way to the top, baby. Um, (laughs) um, We'll we'll, we'll probably do a more in-depth episode of star wars as a whole just yeah just star there's wars a lot to say on the matter mm-hmm. and a lot of memes to reference so. a lot of memes <laughs> if i have the high ground now um this like is it. where the fun begins this is where the fun <laughs> begins yeah this first episode um so take for example the most recent star wars film um we i think it i mean i i, I don't really research movie stuff before it comes out sometimes i'll dig into things like um after the fact but Looking back on the series now that it's out, um, it's pretty obvious they didn't have like an overarching story that they intended. Like they originally had three different directors. You had J.J. Abrams, Ryan Johnson, and who was the third guy they originally had? I don't know that they had decided yet. The plan was originally to have three different directors, one unique for each film. Mm -hmm. And they had decided the first one would be Abrams. And somewhere along the lines of the production of Episode 7, they decided that um, Ryan Johnson would be it. And I don't think they had made a decision as of the time Episode 8 was released who would be directing Episode 9. The, the end result, regardless of who was supposed to do it, it, it ended up sounding like a Mad Libs of Star Wars. <laughs> they didn't have a master plan. It wasn't a well-formed trilogy because there wasn't a plan. No. It, everyone wrote in their own plot. It's like those the the, the we, there's a game you play in the car, right? Where you you start telling a story around the car to pass the time. Uh-huh. When you're driving four hours, and then you pass and then it there's on. one person who has the direction they really want the story to go, <laughs> and no one else is quite on board. So everyone grits their teeth when it's their turn. Someone some would rather watch the world burn. It's like burn. Ryan Johnson. <laughs> Thank you, but no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to take this a completely different direction now. And, now and all the other kids in the car complain different. because it's just too weird and dumb. Can somebody else please take over the story now? And then JJ's like, and then they all died. The end. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Star Wars is one example. But, I mean, in general, we can we sort of have, like, this instinct almost to, like, judge a movie on whether or not we thought the story was good. I mean, there are some films where story films and games and such where story isn't really the most prominent feature i suppose like you have some films where it's not really a linear storyline like take for example i don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie arrival 
Um, I, think, I, I think I did. That's the one with the aliens. Yeah, it's got Jeremy Manhattan. Renner and Amy Adams. Right, and she's the linguist who has, has to figure out the language. Yep. That one kind of had some some weird uh, nonlinear stuff to it, but it was kind of cool. Yeah, we'd have to. That's so much so much content. <laughs> um, like I, I kind of want to rewatch that because I've only ever seen it once and kind of um, break it down more. The but were named after Adam and but you had these plot points that formed together to like for a cohesive whole, and it worked. Um, but generally speaking, I feel like we tend to judge narrative content by how good the story was. So like if the story was dumb, it doesn't matter how good like the special effects were. I mean, if the acting was good, then, you know, it's fine. But like if the story, if, if, if the story doesn't land, it really takes a lot of the punch out of a movie. I mean, or what have you. It could just be us there's a lot of people who are like i i I liked watching the transformers blow each other up those are my favorite movies (laughs) but i mean they usually when you talk to those sorts of people they acknowledge they're just there for the blowing stuff up like nobody would claim that Mm -hmm. (laughs) no one's gonna try to claim that michael bay is a a genius plot writer or storyteller (laughs) or is doing anything prolific with the art of film he's blowing stuff up and explosions it's worth what it's worth but in terms of enduring art, no one's going to put his name in the annals of history. I mean, beyond, like, maybe some of the technical advancements of, like, you know, the, the film use. I mean, there are some there's some scenes and stuff in Transformers that are, like, very technically well done. You have giant metal robots that at least don't look... I mean, they're obviously stylized and not realistic, but they... It doesn't look like it was, like, poorly green-screened in by some kid with Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> Um, I guess uh, as an understatement. So it was, it was technically well done. So there are some aspects there where, yeah, the Transformers movies were pretty good, but yeah, not not really for the story. Um, so I guess that raises the question then. I mean, obviously we talked about how um, story is really important as human beings, but should it be? It depends on what you're going for in your media. Mm-hmm. If you want to build an experience, if you want a book that sucks you in with an experience or a game or a movie that is less about a narrative and more about a feeling or uh, atmosphere, there is merit to that art. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I guess, of course, then again, I, 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 there's a lot of games I don't play for the story. I don't play Mega Man for the story. I play <laughs> to jump and shoot. Yeah. Right. So it depends on how, how and why you're consuming your media. It's got yeah. It's kind of medium. If, if you want to drink a beer and watch robots explode, watch Transformers. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So but at the same time, acknowledge it for what it is. Right. Exactly. And yeah. that's that's kind of the point of what we're doing here is we're we're helping you to recognize what things are and hopefully provide you the tools to be able to do some of that yourselves with your families and your friends, be they Catholic or not. Yeah, so right. I, if you're um, using tra- the continuing to use the Transformers example, if you think it is like the absolute pinnacle of cinema and something, say, along the lines of um, uh, what's like a classic film, like if Shawshank Redemption, yeah, if you think Shawshank Redemption isn't is like worse, or, or if you think Transformers The Last Night is better than the Shawshank Redemption. You're objectively wrong. <laughs> and I haven't even seen the Shawshank Redemption. But, I mean, it's got, obviously, the reputation is a good film, and I intend to watch it at some point. Um, so, I guess, I guess we could talk about, like, is there such thing as objective quality with, with like, media in terms of, like, you know, like, story and things like that? Is there such thing as objective quality, or is it all subjective? There is objective quality. I would say so. There's objective truth. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We, uh, we, we Catholic boys and girls definitely think that there is, you know, ob- things that are objectively beautiful. You know, the the cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris is... What's left of it. Was. What's left of it, of course. The, the, the giant rose window in, in that church is something that anybody who's in their right mind would look at and be awestruck by the by the power and beauty that is present in that thing. So, what is it exactly that objective beauty, why does it exist? Why 
Why do we think that? Because objective beauty is of God. He is mm -hmm. the true, the good, the beautiful. Mm -hmm. Emphasis exactly. in this case on beautiful, right? Exactly. And things that are objectively beautiful are things that are objectively pointing to God. Mm -hmm. So that's precisely how we define such a thing. If we can recognize that in some tangible way, a medium is pointing towards God some characteristic or um, attribute of his, Regardless then we can, we can determine it to be objectively beautiful. Regardless of whether the original author intended it to be taken as such or not. Because as human beings, we tend to uh, make from our heart and our desires. And what everyone desires at the core is God, whether they recognize it or not. Mm -hmm. So, um, Like obviously desires and things become tainted due to our fallen nature and so on so forth and that's where things get messy and there is like there's still like an element of subjectivity like you if if a movie is objectively good that doesn't mean you have to like it but you should at least be willing to acknowledge the good that is in there um even with some films there's well i mean because like the things we talked about you know truth goodness and beauty well and then like the often forgotten one which is like uh unity um there is um there's always I, I, I want to say it's Aquinas talked about like there's all, you always had to find like the truth in something. There's always like an element of truth in there somewhere because, you know, if it exists in created order, there is truth in there somewhere. Um, so I guess that's like a good lens with which in general, um, since we're kind of taking this 30,000 look view at media consumption, um, if you're looking at a film, movie, video game, book, what have you, um, that you want to consume, uh, a good paradigm to view it through is like, okay, um, what is, what is, um, where's the unity? Where's the truth? Where's the goodness? Where's the beauty? Um, so if a movie, book, film, media, what have you, doesn't have a sufficient amount of any or all of these, uh, it's probably something that's not worth your time. But if there's an element of it, that you'd want to explore through that paradigm, like, you know, um, there's a certain amount of truth in it. Um, for example, like say you were to talk about um, a war movie. There's not a whole lot of beauty in a war movie, obviously. It's very ugly, people dying, explosions, flames, burning things, but there like with actual... Goodness, with there actual truth. Yeah. Right? There's, there are things, there are other elements of the transcendentals that can come more to the fore, I guess, um, and something like that. Or say, even though I'm not a huge fan of horror myself, like there's, there's elements of, um, you know, truth, goodness, and beauty that can still, and unity that can still come out of those things. And I think that those are sort of, like with at least the sort of prototypical horror film, from what I understand, it's sort of it's sort of like almost a parable of, um, you know, like, don't do demonic stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the comeuppance of the people who indulge in the vices, I guess, as it were, like the classic ones, you know, like pride and where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth, much grinding of teeth, and people, I guess, and saw or I, whatever. I, ha I haven't seen nearly enough. I've, yeah. I've seen Alien, and I like that one to death. But <clears throat> that one's that one kind of tiptoes the line between like suspense and horror. I, I I think I prefer the suspense part. Yeah. Particularly when it's an alien and not like something that as a Catholic makes me unsettled. Like, no, no, don't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, James, I want you to explain this principle of unity more for our listeners because I think it's not something we hear about often enough when we're talking about the transcendentals. Sure. Um, <sighs> unity, I'm trying to remember the way it was explained to me. That's a 3D game engine, right? No, not quite. <laughs> Um, well, I guess all things of God are one. I, I'm going to, I'm going to try to explain this off the top of my head while avoiding heresy as much as possible. <laughs> as there is the internet right in front of me. There you. is the internet right in front of me. I think I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of that, take advantage of that for the sake of our viewers. But essentially, obviously viewers. unity means that things are one. So God is one, um, one God, three persons. Um, sharing in the same divine nature. Um, and so since we are created in his image and likeness, we are also one. We are like one um, body, soul, composite being. We are not like a some sort of hive mind where we're a collection of different parts. Like we are not 
a hand. We're not a foot. We're not a spleen. Um, we are a human person um, composed. I as a spleen. <laughs> <laughs> um, despite what people might tell you today, uh, Google Chrome, gotta love you. You're not working when I need you to. Okay, phone time. Um, stalling for time. Stalling for time. So I'm just gonna look up. It'd be funny if it pulled up like a Matt Frad. <laughs> Unit a uh, transcendental. Transcend- Unity transcendental. This is this is some top notch content right here, folks. <laughs> we are absolute. We are absolute amateurs. We are trying this out for the first time. We have the intention of growing virtuously <laughs> in the art, in the in the art of, of podcasting. <laughs> but you have to start somewhere and exercise it's that the virtue start, muscle. Folks. Our pursuit of excellence in podcasting has to start at the bottom. Editor James is going to have a fun time with this episode. Sketchers Unity. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know what this is. Um. Oh boy. Just Google Catholic principle of transcendental unity. Naturally. Um. Okay. Here we go. Cardinal Newman Society. This is probably a good one. Here we go. It only it only talks about truth, good, uh, truth, goodness, and beauty, which obviously are good. The ones you hear about most. The ones you hear about most. Um. Goodness, truth. Yep. No, they stop there. Hmm. I'm disappointed. That, that's okay. I think I think our explanation of it is more or less sufficient. For so now. It's it's just kind of pointing. It's at not the, perfect. Look it up. The the coherence of God's vision for His created order and yeah. the. The, the fact that everything is created it fits within within this this context so you know anything that you create as a human being is modeled after and given to you by God's own creative well the power. very the very fact we're driven to create things as human beings is like <clears throat> because we're in the image and likeness of God you want to imitate him right uh, because when 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 we create things right we pour our heart and souls and put a bit of ourself in there. Well, guess what? That's what God did, and part of the ourself that we put into our work is also got has God in it because and of the way He made. Does this, am I making sense? Yeah, no. Yeah, am I, I, her- am I doing a heresy? Well, I hope not. not. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, and like, obviously, God created things from nothing, but we use um, God basically made creation as a sandbox for us to like imitate Him. Um, so God made the first Minecraft. <laughs> God made the first Gary's mod. Let's <laughs> yeah, that's the first true sandbox game. <laughs> Even he though. didn't make the the building components of the universe uniformly one meter cube. <laughs> Probably good. No, he didn't, because otherwise, if the if the one meter cube was like the building block of the universe. <laughs> like subatomic I mean, particles. Things are big enough as it is. Yeah, subatomic <laughs> particles. Would One be. Meter cube. <laughs> we would be just. We would be too, I, we we're going to have to do the math for next episode on how big a human being would be. If a quark was the size of a cubic meter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, One no. plank was <laughs> the <laughs> one meter cube. Uh. Crap, where were we going with that? Oh, oh, yeah, talking about the unity of creation, yeah. Um, so I guess relating that back then to storytelling, um, regardless of, like, whether the story takes on, a, or, like, in whatever medium, movie, TV, video game, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Henceforth, just referred to as media. As media. Assume you know what we mean when we say that. We're not Ben Shapiro, so for us, media means media, not as not in... Not the media. Not the media, yeah. There's media, not which just is, news journalists and pundits. No, they they do not have a, they do not have a monopoly on that term. Um, at any rate, uh, generally, like, I think we sort of have a tendency to uh, naturally enjoy things more that make sense, quote unquote, and I think that's reflective of that unity we want to see in things. See, you've shown me some memes. <laughs> there are exceptions and, and then there's a whole other brand of humor which many of us here like to indulge in that is completely nonsensical and utterly absurd but doesn't preclude the presence of order but rather is sort of a 
it's funny because you, I think because you realize how not real and how much, like obviously like nonsensical, that's where the human uh, humor comes from it for me, I guess. Um, it's ironic. It's ironic. Yeah. Bec- yeah. With a full realization of what the reality is. Um, but general, but anyway, like um, with media, if there's like a story or uh or a plot or something like that that is cohesive makes sense forms like a one like a a unit a whole that overall makes sense to us i feel like it's more um it's more enjoyable and it's like a better quality more objectively like an objectively better um piece of media right it's about how the how the pieces come together well Mm -hmm. um now, ma- making sense isn't necessarily a, a, necess- a necessity, because having stories that kind of challenge our yeah our, the, the 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 limits of our imagination or our understanding are. But there's like a coherence to it, right? As there's a, that- obviously yeah, there can be limited like understanding. I mean, that's just the thing case in general. Like you can have like sort of a baseline understanding of something that's fairly complex. Um, without going too much into detail, that's how I tend to live my life. I'm kidding, <laughs> but it's actually slightly true. Uh, where I'm content to have like that baseline level of understanding of something, which is why you don't have fun playing Smash. No, <laughs> <laughs> that is precisely why. I could dive deeper if I wanted to. I just haven't worked up the desire to do so yet. But I'll I'll get there. Who knows? <laughs> um, but so there's a difference between um, something being coherent. And not, or I guess, what was the other thing we we're talking about? Being co- like coherence and understanding. Right. So if something forms a cohesive whole, if it is, um, the narrative is, I'm trying to remember the term for it, but there's basically no contradiction in the narrative. <laughs> Go back to Star Wars. How did the bad guys know they were on the ship in Episode Eight? Because they didn't tell anybody that they were there. Or what? Well, there, there's the the guy that ratted them out. Right, but how? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I had some like, objection to that. I can't remember what it was. What's well, okay? My some... Objection to that was the fact that they spent the entire movie running away from a star destroyer. Mm-hmm. Imagine if, in Star Wars Five, the entire movie took place in the asteroid field with Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon. Mm-hmm. We'd cut to Yoda and. Luke training, and we cut back to them, and they're still in the asteroid field. Where have you gone? What are you doing? Yep. Do something. Yeah. And then, 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 like C three PO goes, ha- goes, goes, and ha- visits like a, a a casino for no reason, and comes back and like I but, didn't do anything. But yeah, there's there's the con anyway, contrast there. Enough complaining there. We can do a yeah, whole we can, episode we can, about Star Wars. We're probably going to. We'll probably do a couple. <laughs> uh Um, but I guess going back to that, then like. In episode five, for the sake of the conversation we're already on, there is that unity, there's that coherence. And like, okay, A because B, and so forth. Right. Not because A because A. Like, not that circular. Right. They're doing this thing, they're freeing the weird um, hammerhead horses because it's good to do that. I guess. I guess. I mean, what if those slave kids get beaten up because of it? Nope. Nope. Doesn't matter. Nope, doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Don't free the kids, just free He's the got hammerhead Jedi horses. Powers anyway. Yeah, just free the hammerhead horses. Don't worry about the slaves. Thanks, Star Wars. Um, thanks, Ryan Johnson. Thanks, Ryan Johnson. <laughs> thanks, Obama. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, if if there's no, like, contradiction within the structure of the story itself, it makes for an objectively better film. I guess another better example where you have, like, these different... You can have different intertwining... Um, narratives or, or like arcs I guess going on and they'll come together in some way and that's like an aspect of unity like for example on a, um, um, Nathan you've seen Dunkirk I have uh, have you seen Dunkirk Riley I have not seen Dunkirk I'll we'll have to watch it at some point um, like there's a whole bunch of story threads going on at the same time about this one battle it's all the same battle and it's all mm-hmm. happening on the same timeline and at certain points the different stories converge and diverge and like it's, it's kind of an interesting way to tell a story that while not a singular narrative that's easy to follow per se mm-hmm. it forms a coherent cohesive whole yeah right? and it sort of really artfully captures i guess the essence of like what war is actually like the chaos involved 
it's it's yeah the chaos and yet there's still an overarching story i guess being like taking place it's not all about like the big figures doing the big things the big general doing that it's about this guy over here who's hiding with a bunch of other guys in a old boat trying to hide from the germans it's these people over here driving their boat across the english channel and hostile waters to like help rescue troops and bring them home it's over here like these pilots trying to clear the skies for like the rescue boats and so forth um, a lot of little pieces that come together into a whole um, and uh, recently, um, this last um, re- uh, this last semester, I guess, before I graduated, I took a class from um, a priest we know through the Newman Center. Um, he was teaching a, a class at NDSU, this uh, Catholic Studies program. Um, essentially, um, the class was centered around um, the Catholic view of the human person. So a lot of... Um, class is very impactful i guess in the way i think about the world so i guess we'll probably be drawing a lot from that well uh but essentially um he outlined for us there was this aspect of uh it was a very medieval um aspect of uh, like a medieval theology um whereas like the part um i to remember how it exactly goes but basically like the part i guess implies the whole or like reveals the whole mm-hmm. i'm kind of butchering that but Essentially, like, there's a small aspect. There's, like, a microcosm of the macrocosm. So, microcosm being, like, a little miniature, like, you know, and then the macrocosm being, obviously, the greater whole. So, the microcosm reveals the truth, the goodness, the beauty, the unity of the whole thing. Um, And that was reflected in art, like, in um, Gothic cathedrals. They would tell, like, the salvation history story and have, like, different symbology and stuff all trying to convey different truths with beauty and goodness and unity um, to try to educate like the medieval person going to mass about the universe essentially. Or you have like one of the, one of the two, I believe female doctors of the church you have is uh, Hildegard of Bingen. I think her name is, Um, but her, I think there's at least three because, Therese of Lisieux is, and I believe Catherine of Siena is also a doctor. Uh, Teresa of Avila is Therese of a Lisieux doctor. is certainly a doctor of the church. I know that for sure. So, yeah. yeah there's so I think there's four. There's there's more than two. Yeah, more than that. two. At least two. <laughs> <laughs> um, but at any rate, I think she also had this um, deal that was very much in, uh, influenced uh, medieval like thought on like macro, microcosm, macrocosm. Um where I, I, like she had this model of the universe through her like visions and stuff that she had where um it was it was like a giant like egg shaped circle but like within the levels egg shaped circle egg. ellipse <laughs> ellipse the ellipsoid can i offer like... you a nice egg in this trying to <laughs> <laughs> um but basically and so like within the different like circles within the circle if i'm remembering this correctly i'm probably butchering yeah, it. the eggs we can tell the eggs, how old the eggs within the eggs within the you could tell russian, the russian dolls <laughs> yeah <laughs> But like you have the different levels, but they're all they all form this cohesive whole, I guess. Uh, I'll have obviously the, the seven rings. In the, yeah, in the future, seven probably want to do a little more homework before doing these episodes. But I at any rate, it's, 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 it's a start. Like this. It's a start. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. So, I guess that brings us to what we want to do with this podcast, um, where we want. Essentially, what we want to do is convey these truths um, and goodness and beauty and unity we find or in me- <laughs> the goodness loss um, that we find in media, and so relate that to the rest of our lives. So I guess to bring it bring it back around, um, truth, uh, yeah. So like in media, what that says about our lives, how we're in the world but not of it. So like we are consuming what the world is taking but we're not of the world and that we are also relating it to the things of God, the, <clears throat> the things of God, the things of heaven. We're being, being critical cons- Catholic consumers of media. Mm-hmm. We're, we're not just ingesting everything that's on Netflix, just binging it like it's junk food. <laughs> but like, 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 we're, like we're Kirby opening our mouth and just sucking. Wee! Wee! <laughs> and, then, and then just and <laughs> and copying it, mm-hmm. you know? Um, because that's exactly what would happen if we just consumed it thoughtlessly without thinking. Mm-hmm. We would just 
we, we imitate things more often than we would like to admit things that we consume. So, so Kirby's We're, the perfect analogy. It's like you are what you eat or you are what you consume kind of a thing that goes not just for food, but basically anything you take into your mind. So, um, so if you aren't picky or you aren't discerning at all when you do that, it's going to be Eat your vegetables. Time. So <laughs> sometimes you need to consume things that are good for you. Eat your vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> I said no more vegetal. Uh, but but sometimes you have to consume things that aren't that are good for you that you might not necessarily be drawn to. And sometimes you got to pick around a couple of things in an otherwise good. Uh, you got to eat meal. It's plan, like plate while we're doing thing. this food analogy thing. You want to eat the rhubarb stalks and not the leaves, although it would take 11 pounds of rhubarb leaves to kill you at that point. What are you doing with your life? But <laughs> in all things, uh, moderation and temperance. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. 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 That, 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 that covers it. So I guess sort of recap. Um, what are we talking about? We uh, Transcendental, like using the transcendentals and we encourage you obviously to look this stuff up if you're curious because um, we clearly didn't no <laughs> it's all from memory and we'll we'll get better at this but uh using um the transcendentals truth goodness beauty and unity as sort of the lens by which you consume media especially but i mean that can also extend to other things in your life um just in general obviously the transcendentals they transcend see what i did there the different levels of human life um so yeah. yeah main takeaway i mean we wanted to talk about why stories are important right but we, we sort of we covered the, the it. transcendentals are why yeah yeah that, that that's the conclusion we came to kind of yeah um so i guess yeah if we uh wrap this up we're obviously work in progress we're gonna we're gonna try some different things um if you're out there listening thank you for doing so we appreciate yeah. it be sure to check out our sponsor. Which we, which we, we, we have no sponsors. With two clicks, I can install honey. Disclaimer: We are not actually sponsored by. We're not, sponsored. We're not sponsored, sponsored by anybody. We're not, at we're not all. sponsored by anyone whatsoever. We're, I mean, we're poor, but we're, we're open to it. We have jobs. I guess we're not poor. We have jobs. <laughs> this isn't our job. Not yet. yet. Not yet. I mean, hey. Um, if it happens, it happens. If it happens, I mean. God willing, it won't be my job either way. Yeah. <laughs> as, as I am an aspiring <laughs> seminary. Yeah. So, there's that. Um, great. All right. Well, um, thank you for listening. Do we have a sign-off? Sign-off. Um, Does this podcast have a name? How trad do we want to be about our sign-off? Not not horridly. <laughs> we want to be approachably trad with our sign So, we're like ending with a glory BB. I think ending with prayer is fun, but we also should have sign-off bit okay i'll have to workshop the sign-off bit <laughs> do, do we end with the lord be with you <laughs> i mean if we great singers i bet you didn't know that about us either well, well, I, well i am when i attempt to and i'm not fighting a cold yeah <laughs> and i'm doing the monsignor Gehring singing voice and not my <laughs> actual singing voice yep um sign up bit i don't know we'll Invite workshop it we, we can come back sign to off it. here we'll come back to it we'll we keep will, workshopping we it work in progress all right yeah. at any rate uh thank you guys for listening we've been the uh palladian papists that's what we you agreed on. You cannot find us on Patreon. We cannot yet. Yet. <laughs> we'll we'll workshop that. Or we'll we'll we'll, we'll see. Oh. We'll see how this. N- not not right now. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah. Wherever you're listening to this, I guess subscribe because we intend to keep doing this. Uh, we're, we're available. Smash on... that like button. <laughs> if there is one, we're gonna. This is going to be spread around the podcasting platforms a bit. So I guess give us positive feedback or negative feedback too. Just like if, if you have constructive. Would, would you write this podcast? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, keep your compliments and your criticisms constructive because we're still and charitable so. yeah be temperance uh, be temperate and charitable in your feedback but if you've listened this far if you have we would love to hear from you we'd love to hear about anything you have to say that because would we would like to know that yourself. anybody listened to this at all yeah no seriously like we need friends uh, <laughs> 
We Please. are three guys in the basement drinking Jim Beam recording a podcast. <laughs> we need help. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and I guess uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Uh, well, let's end in a glory be. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All right, guys. Signing off. Talk to you later. Peace. Bye. Bye.